At InsideShare, we've been working as leaders and innovators in the field of participatory video for the past 17 years. We've carried out hundreds of projects in over 60 countries. However, the project that I will be using as a case study for this presentation was a first. For the first time, participatory video was used to evaluate humanitarian response work. For this pilot project, we collaborated with ActionAid Bangladesh to collect insights into the experiences of flood-affected communities in two districts in northern Bangladesh. As a result, I will be able to share with you a participatory video process that is tailor-made and tested as a tool for post-disaster evaluation. To form a local participatory video and evaluation team, a small group of people, ideally half male and half female, would need to be trained to carry out all the steps of the process. In addition, they will need to be provided with all the essential equipment items. Phase 1. Project Preparation The trained team meets up to set clear objectives for their evaluation and to agree on the best locations to carry it out. Four groups of 8 to 15 participants are invited to join as representatives of their wider community. One group of men, one group of women, one group of girls and one group of boys. All logistical arrangements are made, including drinks and snacks, as well as suitable venues for desk-based work, group discussions and a screening event. Phase 2. Story Collection the people in the group take turns sharing their story, starting from the first day of the disaster, whilst the team guides them with a few open and non-leading questions. After having heard each other's stories, the circle participants use a table to identify and nominate one person who would be best placed to illustrate their collective experience through his or her personal story. By taking turns to draw each key step of the selected story, the group helps the storyteller to prepare for talking in front of the camera. The selected storytellers from each group share their story again, whilst the team works together to support and film them. After filming, they straight away watch back, so that the storyteller can decide if he or she would like to re-record anything, to add any missing topics, or for any part of the video to be left out. After filming all the selected stories, the team films so-called illustrative footage for all the things that were mentioned by many participants to illustrate what they were talking about. Phase 3. Story Analysis After giving each storyteller a code, the team listens to and analyzes all of the stories that were collected by using an analysis table. The team uses these tables to identify which problems, enablers and ideas were most often expressed by the community participants. After that, a visual cause and effect analysis is used to better understand the relationship between the various problems and enablers. Next, the team identifies what problems their community could address themselves, which problems are beyond their power to influence, and which issues they could address with the support from outsiders. After completing the story analysis, the team uses editing software to organize the parts of different people's stories and to create a video that summarizes the experience of the community according to their key findings. Phase 4 screening and feedback. The draft video and the key findings of the analysis are then presented to the community members to check if the findings resonate with their experience and to identify any potential missing issues or ideas. Following the screening and presentation, any missing or additional issues or ideas are then captured on video and watched back. Phase 5 editing and reporting. The trainees finish the video by including the missing topics as well as some titles and music. If the evaluation took place on behalf of an NGO, the team could summarize their process, their findings and their lessons in a short report. 
Phase 6 – Dissemination and Responses Through online sharing and face-to-face -face meetings, the videos can reach a large amount of stakeholders. Stakeholders are invited to share their responses in front of a camera so that their perspectives can be screened back to the communities to facilitate true two-way communication. If you have any comments or questions about participatory video for evaluation, about this project in Bangladesh, or about participatory video in general, get in touch with us via email or Twitter.